one beyond my wildest dreams Maybe that road could have carried me to streets of gold Things aren't always as they seem Looking back on all the chances that I missed Some I held, some slipped away Set the curtain that rises to the stage Chilling games of second guessing I just forget the lessons that I couldn't learn Because one street over there's a life I could have known Who would have kept me from one I had a day Robertson County, this is 1100 WSG. I'm Utah Lamont, and this is one straight over. Sorry, we have this way, I lost my phone. Have you ever done that? You just kind of come on, and you're like, uh oh, where is it? Then we call. If we lose my phone, we just can't seem to function. And so, uh, and it is part of our broadcast here because I've set that up on social media and all the things. And uh, uh, so I, I do apologize. I'm a little bit later than normal. But uh, we do welcome you to us today. And what we have going on here is an opportunity to say, um, hey man, what's happening? What's going on? We are living. And so I always love it when my friend Donovan Hilton is in the house. Donovan, hello. Good morning, sir. And you brought Lieutenant Arnold. I love it when my veterans are in the house. <laughs> Veteran of uh, Army? U.S. Army, yes. 24 years. God uh, bless you. Thank you. Absolutely. It's an honor to serve. Uh, uh, really, really, really was brought up in a Navy family. Yes. Wanted to go to U.S. Navy, but have this defective color vision. So oh. when it came to ROTC scholarships, they said, you've got a scholarship, but you got to be a Marine. Oh, wow. And so I love Marines. At that uh -huh. point in my life, we were thinking Blue Water Navy. And yeah. So uh, the Army came through with the scholarship. There you go. Go. I had my son served in Army and infantry, and I'm uh, just so proud of his service. And I, that's my, I feel, I'll say often, my biggest regret is that I did not serve in the military. I grew up in the Vietnam era, so I was quite frightened about uh, to do with that. Well, I think I would have. And um, so, I'm in Vietnam yesterday. I'm uh, on March 29th, and we're going to be at the place of the Moral Garden, which is the place of the Moral Garden, which is 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 the but uh, we're here to talk with Lieutenant Colonel Dennis Schroeder. Yes. Schroeder. Did I say it properly? Yes. And um, all the things that you've got going on. Donovan, why don't you just unpack what we're doing? This is Donovan's show today. So there you go. Good morning, everyone. Again, you turn. Thank you for having me. And uh, like you said, it's pretty much just making sure we as neighbors know what's going on mm -hmm. one street over. And so yeah. I'm truly honored to introduce my friend, uh, former Lieutenant Colonel. And the work that he's doing, especially highlighting our veterans. And I did not know, so it's a learning process for me. And I'm hoping that we as neighbors in Robertson County can learn and support as well, uh, especially for those that didn't get it, was not in the military, mm -hmm. you know. And so how can we help? And so uh, Lieutenant Colonel and I met at another community activity in the White House uh, about a year ago, mm -hmm. built a really great relationship. I've seen him in the community and just learning more about his program and me just becoming um, just growing in pride for my country, you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I highlighted, you know, um, a Lieutenant uh, Dennis Schroeder's, a Lieutenant Colonel Dennis Schroeder's um, nonprofit organization, the Price of Freedom Foundation, uh, which focuses on highlighting um, Gold Star. What we do is we tell the entire life stories of those who died while in military service to our nation. I, mm -hmm. I called it the Price of Freedom because that's exactly what uh, those individuals have paid uh, is a price for our freedom. Of course, they're no longer here on earth with us. Um, so honoring them is, in a sense, it's for them, but actually it's more for their surviving family and the friends that they knew uh, in life. So, um, you know, the Gold Star families, I don't know if everybody is familiar with what a Gold Star 
uh, family is, but that is defined as any person who has lost a loved one in, in their immediate family um, while they were living or while they were serving uh, in the military, in any of the branches. So uh, you can be a gold star family, you can be a gold star mom, dad, brother, sister, son, daughter. Mm -hmm. I love that. And this, you know, with Memorial Day will be upon us before we blink. Mm -hmm. And I love that the price of freedom, because we do, you know, I told you I was full time ministry before I started teaching and I'm still part time. But one of the things that I was tasked with to do many years ago was to put some kind of a uh, uh, a monument up for our military veterans at our congregation. So we put that up. And then on Memorial Day, we put up stories of those who are Gold Star families. So we yeah. have identified in our congregation several individuals who are related to our members. One, particularly Donna Hagen, who's been, her and John owned Springfield Drugs for years. Mm -hmm. Her brother, Terry Smith, there was a gymnasium name for him. Um, in Washington, I guess, but um, he, he died in Vietnam, a mm -hmm. bona fide hero. Mm -hmm. And then we have just several others uh, that, that we honor from Vietnam, from World War II, and they're go our Gold Star families. And right. so I think I want to take your heading, The Price of Freedom, and put that on my uh, put that on our memorial at our church, if you don't mind, I and, don't and mind maybe at all. feature your your website i'm assuming this is all facilitated through a website how do you facilitate telling the stories so what we do is we have a website and we have mm -hmm. social media presence uh but the actual work involved is uh it's quite in, intense because mm -hmm. uh what we try to do number one is is to identify first of all a family that is willing to work with us we have sure. to get their permission yeah. first Working with them, then we try and identify as many people as possible that knew the fallen uh, loved one during the course of their life, not just their time in the military, but while they were children. Mm -hmm. You know, if we can identify teachers, friends, mm. uh, coaches, and what we are about is doing in-depth interviews with mm -hmm. each of these people, mm -hmm. asking for copies of anything that may help tell that person's life story. Uh, we really want to know who they were as a, an entire person, what they were good at, what they struggled with, what inspired them, how they influenced the people around them. And that's the type of story that is not normally heard. Even, I mean, there are a few. Uh, we, everybody knows about Pat Tillman and, and his story. Uh -huh. And I'm very happy for his family that they've been able to get his story out. But there are last year up at Fort Campbell there were seven soldiers that were killed in traffic accidents and even as I drive on and off that base I don't even know their names mm -hmm. and I will say that most of the soldiers on Fort Campbell themselves don't even know their names or anything else about them mm -hmm. and that's what I aim to try to change. I love that. It's so funny because this is, you just, you don't really understand how, what a passion this is for me. Because, and if you've been listening to me, I apologize because you've heard this many times. My first childhood memory, and the reason why I did not serve because I was big old chicken, was our, our hired hand named Kenneth Pease who had been around my entire life when I was, you know, born, he wasn't a lot younger than my parents. And so he worked on the farm. And so Kenneth was just a part of us and felt like a big brother really to me. And I remember vividly him coming and saying he was graduating and he was drafted and he was going to Vietnam. And I was, oh, I just remember being so proud of him because he was going to be a soldier. And I was so excited. And it seemed like he left. And then just a minute later, we get that phone call, um, and my mom, you know, I remember the, oof, I remember the emotion, mm -hmm. and us getting in the car, and, and driving to the field. You're right. And when you're a farmer, and a car comes into the field, you know it's an emergency. Because you don't take a car into right. the field no. unless you need somebody. And I remember seeing my parents grieve. And I, I didn't know. I was just a little kid, you know. And, um, uh, oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember his memorial and him being under glass, you know. And um, he barely lived, right? you know. And so I, I've, I've always felt like, man, we need to tell Kenneth's story. Right. You know, he stepped on a landmine. 
his brothers, it was so, years later, whenever his parents passed and they had his estate sale. Of course, I went. And his, I don't think his family had any idea what Kenneth meant to me. I wrote a piece that was in, because um, him and his, him, him and my daddy were super close. And we had, when I was a little kid, we had a, a big issue with wild dogs, okay? Mm-hmm. People would abandon dogs. They'd have puppies in the woods. A lot of the dogs I had as a child were wild puppies that we raised. And so um, we were, Daddy and Kenneth had found some wild puppies, and I think they didn't want Mama to see, Mama to see, see them and like, Will you quit bringing these puppies. That? And so Daddy and Kenneth were hiding them in their shirt until they could get them to me and my sister to see them. Mm-hmm. And I've got a picture of my sister and I with those puppies. And um, I remember that so so vividly. And so, I mean, he was just part of the family. And I, and, and I wrote about that in the local paper years ago when I first started writing and, and really kind of delving into the written word and told that story at Memorial Day. And his, I think his family then realized that what he meant to me. And so right. while I was at the sale, they had a, a helmet there mm-hmm. that was part of his, you know, gear. And they were just, because they had all the kinds of other things, and they auctioned it off. Because I didn't, and I asked him, I said, can I buy that? Mm-hmm. And so I have his helmet. I have one of his helmets. And so it's just a treasured, you know, possession to me. But that's always been my, my issue is we, nobody knows his story. Right. Nobody knows about Kenneth, and I think about, I know that uh, Donna's brother has been honored, in, mm-hmm. in, you know, with the, the gymnasium, different things, but there's so many soldiers that paid the price, right. exactly. and we don't know anything about them. Exactly, and even you those that, that have uh, bridges or things like that yeah. named after them, we don't really who know. really knows mm. them, um, yeah. you know, I, so what we want to do is, as much as possible, to collect what we can so mm-hmm. that we can tell that story yeah. we, we we say that we serve the gold star families because that's the number one issue that gold star families have mm-hmm. uh is their sense that their loved one will be forgotten and their mm-hmm. uh their sacrifice uh no longer honored and that is that actually comes true uh for almost all of them mm-hmm. um a, a six months to two years after the 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 death happens that outside the family and close friends like you Mm -hmm. um nobody really knows Mm -hmm. and life goes on and um yeah i just believe that we need to tell that story Mm -hmm. um and to tell it on an ongoing basis so that we can help those families to realize that we do honor them we do want to remember them we do want their 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 names their faces their stories to be told and number two, we want to preserve those memories for future generations. The very first story that we're working on and that we are so very close to getting printed um, is that of Alfonso Abdalemos. He was uh, a machinist mate first class in the Navy. Uh, he had served 18 and a half years in the Navy when he was lost at sea. He left behind a wife and three small children. He was lost uh, off the USS Kitty Hawk in November of uh, 1998. And um, I've, we've been working for the last almost two years now uh, with his uh, surviving children. And they, the reason they got in touch with us is because they were starting to try to piece together their father's story for the benefit of the youngest, who had zero m- memories right. of, of right. him at all. Um, and they really weren't getting a, a lot of, they weren't getting uh, negative stuff, but the you know, folks in my generation and, and uh, uh, the like were saying, oh, that was so long ago, we've all moved on. Mm-hmm. When we got involved, we said, you know, we're the Price of Freedom Foundation, we want to honor Alfonso, would you be willing to help us? And almost all of them sat down and did interviews with us. Mm-hmm. And it's been a voyage of discovery uh, for all of the people that we've been uh, working with, more so than I ever thought was going to happen. Uh, but it, we all have this little piece of information, and we see one aspect of that person's life. And when we hear, say, John, uh, or Donovan's uh, uh, perspective, Donovan knows that person in a different way than I do. And mm-hmm. so we all get to know some more things about them. The, um, Alfonso was born in the Philippines. He served time in the Philippine Army. Uh, his father 
wanted him to become a U.S. citizen so that he could have better uh, op options for himself and his family, and he did. A few years later, he met his wife in the Philippines. The fact that Afonso served in the Philippine army was a shocking revelation to his children. They, None, no they did wow. not know about wow. it until we were doing these interviews. Um, and in fact, even though the book is uh, about to be published, the story is still, in a sense, going to be uh, ongoing because uh, his widow, who never remarried, mm -hmm. uh, and his youngest uh, daughter are going this month to the Philippines to interview some people back there uh, who knew him. Uh, oh, wow. And we do intend mm. to, so we, we, we publish books and we intend to produce documentary style videos. Oh, that'd be fabulous. So, yeah, that's just wonderful. Because, I mean, as, as you're sitting there talking, I know that when I was at the, um, the, the estate auction for Kenneth's mom and dad, I, I, the, the, those who, his nieces and nephews, I don't, I don't think they really knew mm -hmm. him or number one they wouldn't have let me buy that helmet <laughs> you know I, i'm because i mean i was not going to challenge a family member if they wanted to buy it right and so um i think if they had really understood and i, th I don't think because he was just there for a minute i mean six months i mean it mm -hmm. was just he was barely in country right. before he died and his brothers even said when they realized what he was doing they just knew in their spirit he wasn't coming home because right. he was a mind sweeper right you know and and so uh with a dog and um so i doubt very seriously those who his would be nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews really have any idea who kenneth was right. it was i was in um I'm from this Mayfield area is where this is because mm -hmm. he went to Lowe's High School with me. Of course, Lowe's is no more, but Graves County, Kentucky. And um, I was in with my mother at Cracker Barrel. Okay. And there was a gentleman sitting there with a Vietnam vet's hat on. And I stopped and talked to him. And I said, did you know Kenneth? And he was like, oh, yeah. And so <laughs> most of the Vietnam veterans in that area, of course, they, they right. went to school together. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll because I ask that well, question a lot. They go, "Oh, I rode the bus with him." You know? We'd love to be able to tell yeah. his story, and mm -hmm. you know, one of the things people sometimes ask me is, "Well, how far back will you go?" And honestly, we haven't set any sort of time frame or time limit on that. The challenge that we encounter, though, is that the farther back in time we go, the more difficult it is to mm -hmm. find living yeah. uh, people who knew that that person. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have to go more on written records and other documentation that we can find. Um, and so, I mean, that, so anybody who's listening, if you know uh, a Gold Star family, if you are a Gold Star family member, we would love to uh, be able to tell your loved one's story. Uh, we would be honored to do so. Yeah, and are you affiliated at all with what they're doing for the Vietnam vets at the Springfield I Memorial know, Gardens? Actually, I know the the founder of of Ken, uh, the uh, you know the Orange Medal mm -hmm. uh, Foundation, and we've met at different events before. And mm -hmm. I support him, and I you know let mm -hmm. my uh, followers know about the things that they're going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but have we ha sat down and talked about? Um, you know, doing these kind of, uh, no, we haven't had that yeah. conversation. Yet. Well, and as I think about, you know, the task of telling these stories, it's monumental. It is monumental. It's monumental. <clears throat> and it's, it's the sort of thing that I was, uh, um, I struggled a lot beginning uh -huh. this, um, just because it's like, man, number one, I couldn't believe that I was the first person to have this idea. I'm certain mm -hmm. I was not. Um, but then I was started to look for other organizations that were doing something like mm -hmm. this, and there aren't there aren't any that are doing exactly what we're doing. We have a few that are doing kind of uh, uh, related things. Most of the the books that I found out there that are done have been done by a, a particular family for their family member. Right. Uh, the, um, the Library of Congress is doing and has been for a long time, been doing the Veterans History Project, but there you're sending information to them. Mm -hmm. You're not getting anything compiled back. Um, there are some others <clears throat> that, that um, I, there's one that we are partnering with uh, called the Dear Calvin Project, where they basically are uh, focused on working with families that left behind small children mm -hmm. and being able to collect uh, not only the stories, but a letter, personal letter, and a memento 
from the uh, you know, the Fallen's uh, buddies while they were in the military oh, wow. that, that are going to be addressed to that child oh, wow. or children. Yeah. Uh, so we do work with those organizations co- collaboratively when, uh, when we can. Um, but, yeah, it takes a lot of research. And oh, I, yeah. I, we can definitely use help <laughs> in that area. So if anybody, uh, I've been told that uh, genealogists love to do research so we'd love to, to have conversations with anybody who's uh, uh, motivated that way mm-hmm. um, we have three other families that we're working with right now one the one that's a little bit more uh, along the the process was a soldier who was killed in Vietnam mm-hmm. um, we have a Navy family another Navy family and an, an Air Force family uh, as well uh, that we're definitely needing researchers help with and This was, it was basically something that was placed on my heart. Um, I was working for a college of nursing and uh, traveling all over the place here. And, uh, but I I represented uh, the military side of the the college. And so we traveled with with other schools and uh, I was sitting at dinner with a colleague from another uh, sister school and was going over this idea with her. Now you have to kind of, Put this metal picture in your mind. This is a female retired Marine Corps drill sergeant. Okay, that's so, intense. <laughs> it's like I'm going to be her. Right? <laughs> yes. So I, you know, I went over this idea. We weren't thinking about doing the videos at the time. We we're just focused on doing doing the books. And I said, you know, what does, you know, what what do you think about this? Have you heard of anybody doing anything like this? And she said, I don't care if anybody else has been doing it. Love the idea. Get off your ass and make it happen. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and th- and so there I was traveling 80, 90 percent of the time, uh, no experience writing anything other than military, uh, uh, you know, writing, which is it put you to sleep. <laughs> oh, of course, uh, I understand. <laughs> and uh, have zero experience with anything video related. I do photography, but that's totally different. Uh, skill set and um, just had this burn in my heart Mm -hmm. and I was using all of these excuses so the job went away a couple months later I said okay God I get the message Mm -hmm. (laughs) my my time excuse has gone away now I don't have any money but I have this passion and Mm -hmm. so that's what I've been doing and slowly over the last four years built up uh, a board of directors I got a small number of volunteers that help with some key critical things for us and we've got a handful of uh, families that we're uh, serving but my vision and uh, what I believe God's placed in my heart to do is to create something that's going to be able to serve every Gold Star family um, you know if they if they want it now mm-hmm. you know not every family is going to want it uh, you know there's all kinds of dynamics that that uh, could come uh, into the picture here, but for those that want it, I want to be able to create enough of an organization and an infrastructure and support system that we can offer it to every single one. Mm-hmm. And literally, there are close to a thousand uh, that die every single year. That's amazing, amazing. You just don't, you just don't understand that. Well, we had lost a soldier just recently mm-hmm. that was on, they they honored him up in uh, Jolton and uh, died in a helicopter crash. And right. um, he was a Metro police officer as well. And so there's just all kinds of stories well, constantly, constantly. And, and and so yes, a lot of t- people think about the the fact that you know active duty. We're going to be talking mm-hmm. about active duty, but. Um, I spent half of my career as a full-time reservist, mm-hmm. so um, this extends to those in the army and, and the reserve components, so National Guard and Reserve. And I definitely uh, have uh, have some follow-ups I need to do to mm-hmm. for those two National Guard uh, pilots that were. We definitely want to offer this service yes, to, there to were their t- families. There were two, and I think yes. just one that was actually local. One, there were both Tennesseans, mm-hmm. I think, but mm-hmm. one that was in this area. Okay. And I don't know. I, I just only know about it because mm-hmm. you reached out to me because we had they were doing a flag mm-hmm. um, uh, 
they were doing a, a, a flag memorial that right. they needed some help with on Monday. But I tell you, we do need to pause for just a moment sure. and uh, take a break. But uh, enjoying this conversation, as anybody who knows me, this is this is my heart. I love love our military and uh, just can't can't do enough to honor uh, the price of freedom and appreciate what you're doing, Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel. And uh, we're going to pause for a moment and talk about one of our sponsors, Barry and Rebecca Richards with the Exit Realty Garden Gate team. I um, worked with them, on, or we got to see them on Monday night. They were at the Open Door Pregnancy and Resource Center. And I want to just pause here and say, if you have not gotten on board to work with the Open Door Pregnancy and Resource Center, they just did their big dinner. Their, and they, they don't call it a fundraiser. It's just the awareness of what they're doing in the community. Reach out to them and become a sponsor. You can be a monthly sponsor. You can do whatever it is. You can be a prayer partner, whatever it is, because places like Open Door, they are changing our community from the inside out, and that's what changes the world, guys. So uh, Barry and Rebecca see that. They volunteer with them. Barry does the video every year and tells the story, and he was there, so I got to sit at the table with them as we um, just honored their work. But I, I always bring up the things they do in the community because that's the kind of people they are. If you want a, a real estate team that knows the community, they're from Cross Plains. They've been there 27 years now, I think. Uh, they're going to be at the Kilgore Station Bluegrass Festival as well, third weekend in May. Uh, they're on the board uh, that helps bring us that. But they're so involved in the community. They helped me at my uh, in my classroom because Barry was a vice president of a media marketing company for 17 years before he went into real estate. So he brings all of that experience to the table and, and, and just helps tell stories and do all the things beautifully. And they can certainly tell the story of the property you're wanting to sell and if you've got property that's just not getting any action it's just not getting any um, um, uh, interest you probably need new pictures you probably need video you might need drone footage he can do all those things and do it beautifully Rebecca one of the first in the area to be a seniors real estate specialist been at this I think over 15 years now she's been a realtor and uh, she crosses every T and dots every I she stays up to date studies all the time to make sure she's properly representing you or maybe you want to be a part of the exit realty garden gate team uh, they would love to mentor you if you want to reach out to them. They specialize in Robertson County properties, Barry and Rebecca do, but they also buy and sell in the surrounding counties and across the state line in Kentucky. You can connect with them at sellwithbecky.com, sellwithbecky.com or buy, B-U-Y at robertsoncounty.com or just call Rebecca at 615-504-7425 615-504-7425 let them know that you turn simple and thank them for sponsoring one straight over. We are continuing our conversation with Price Freedom. This is an organization brought to us by Lieutenant Colonel Dennis Schroeder and Donovan Hilton, as he always does, brings interesting folks to the table. And I uh, could not say enough about this one. This is one that's right on my heart. And I'll, as an audio-video production teacher... If you have not discovered the wonders of iPhones and that it's a TV studio in your pocket and uh, there are uh, lavalier mics that you can get that hook up to that, you can produce with little iMovie apps. Everything you need is on that phone. Oh, yes. It's amazing. It is. It, it, it is amazing. Now, we do things beyond that, at the, in, but, but the basics of it, What I, I tell my students, I actually told my principal the other day, we were doing recruiting, I said, really... You ought to make audio video production a mandatory class because every single one of us are broadcasting all the time. All the time. And we don't understand the implications of it. And I said, this should be a requirement because it is for every all. And um, what we have in our pockets now is breathtaking. Oh, absolutely. Breathtaking. So you can do so much. Oh, yes. With well, what you, yeah. In fact, um, one of the things that, that, the uh, the Optal uh, family had asked is if we could help them get um, get some equipment that we could they could mm -hmm. take to the Philippines with them to do these. Th they were going to use the uh, at least one iPhone. Mm -hmm. I suggested that if they had two, you could get two different camera angles, mm -hmm. and and so uh, we had uh, a couple of videos, YouTube videos that kind of talk about how to to Very position good. your cameras, and so yes, we we. Um, we acquired some lighting for them. Um, some uh, we acquired a steady cam in case they wanted to mm -hmm. uh, be walking around with uh, you know with the camera. We acquired some uh, uh, microphones, some microphones mm -hmm. for them, both hardwired and wireless, mm -hmm. uh, so that they could adapt to whatever their situation is. And yeah, uh, it was 
uh, for our budget, which is tiny, tiny. It was a big bite, but it was about five hundred and twenty dollars or something like that yep. to to get that with the the um, you know with the stands and all. But it's amazing, and um, I had that's one thing when I came into the audio video program. We're buying all this equipment, and we're buying things so we can <clears throat> teach the the students beyond mm-hmm. the the <clears throat> what you have in your pocket, but. Truly, what you have in your pocket is beyond oh, anything oh, we had 10 oh, years ago. Absolutely. It's incredible. I, and I, uh, I'm blown away. I, I, mm-hmm. I personally have used uh, a professional photographer in Nashville who uses iPhone only uh, for her work. Uh, mm-hmm. And she's, she's done, actually, the videos on our website were shot by her mm-hmm. on that iPhone. And mm-hmm. the, uh, all, my headshots for the last two years were shot by her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll give a plug to Nita Ann in Nashville. So <laughs> I'm a photographer as well, and um, I'm, I've always done, I did film photography, and I'm mm-hmm. having to learn digital from mm-hmm. just, you know, doing portrait type stuff. And uh, people who don't want to invest money in having a photographer, I said, if you have an iPhone, put it in portrait mode and take your pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I truly. And, and if you want to, you know, have a unique setting and the things that we offer where I take pictures, that's one thing. Right. But if you just need pictures, just put your phone in portrait mode. Portrait. You're mm-hmm. a photographer. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do. And, uh, yeah, what you've got in your pocket blows me away. Yeah. Blows me away. Technology but, can be mm-hmm. is a great equalizer here. And yeah. it basically, it's a matter then of the creativity, the, mm-hmm. the, the photographer's eye, mm-hmm. uh, being able to uh, modify light and, and do creative mm-hmm. use of lighting. Uh, that. I don't think the technology is there to, <laughs> to do that yes. for you yet. Yes, oh, it's evident. All you got to do is look at some of the things I've done in my barn, and my lighting's terrible. I haven't gotten that figured out yet. But uh, that's why I tell people, go outside right. on a sunny day, on a nice day, kind of in the shade. Make sure there's no shadows on their face. and Take your pictures, man. Right. You can do it. Uh, talking with uh, Lieutenant retired Lieutenant Colonel mm-hmm. Dennis Schroeder. Schroeder, right? Schroeder, Schroeder, Schroeder. Yes. And uh, uh, Donovan Hilton's here. What do you? What, Donovan's been here just sitting so quiet. Do you want to say anything? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious to know how much does it cost, <clears throat> excuse me, to make the books as you're going through that process? Well, you know, we're, we are discovering that as we go. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been blessed because the biggest cost, uh, if we had to pay somebody to do it, is to be the writer. We had a, a we we're blessed to have a volunteer uh, who uh, invested five months of his life mm-hmm. into uh going through all of the interviews that we uh, had completed, all of the photos and everything else that we had collected. Um, and he happened to have been a criminal investigator for the Air Force. Uh, was that you know, they could do this for um, $10,000 to $20,000. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, we were blessed that we didn't have to do that. I know that we've been able to, we, we couldn't get a, a, away from uh, a little bit of travel. Most of the family members that we interviewed were in San Diego uh, a couple of summers ago. I took a drive out there. Mm-hmm. Um, just the cost for gas and uh, two, two nights stay at a cheap motel <laughs> still wound up costing us about $650 to, to make that trip. Um, I've been using cameras and other equipment that other people have donated uh, mm-hmm. or volunteered. Um, the hard costs for actual uh, that that we in, in have acquired was for the cover of the book. We paid about a thousand dollars for that. Mm. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, that cover is a local artist here who's uh, been doing this for like fifteen years and has uh, a track record of creating covers that sell. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yes, we definitely want people to buy the book, and people do judge a book by its yeah, cover. Yes, they do. So uh, I think that was an investment worthwhile. Um, the publisher that we're going with, um, we were we were struggling with some technical issues uh, about it. So we basically got what I think is going to be a a reasonable workaround, so that we're going to do self uh, or a print on demand service for most of what people will be ordering, but we want to produce an offset print book in high quality that we can pr- we can give to the family, because that's basically what we're p- promising these families. We're gonna give you the hard, and that's gonna cost us $1,700 for, uh, for the minimum p- print order for, for that. Um, so, you know, 
on the cheap, we've been able to do this here for under three thousand dollars. Okay. But uh, that's uh, um, that's probably not going to be our case going uh, going forward unless I find some additional writers that are willing to take this on and get excited about it and mm -hmm. can can you know produce a, an excellent story mm -hmm. that is honoring and truthful and that's basically the bottom line because uh, it's the writer who's going to be the most critical piece to this yeah because you've got it that's the thing i talk to the students about all the time is we're, we're going to be doing some podcasting mm -hmm. and um you've got to be able to tell the story and people get very intimidated it's like well i gotta write it out it, and if you if you can verbally tell a story just record yourself verbally telling it and then just transcribe it right. that's what I, I encourage people i have so many friends who preach I can't write. I'm like, you get up in the pulpit and preach every Sunday. You can write. Are you kidding me? Transcribe your sermons, brother. Right. And uh, I mean, it's just people don't realize. It, and and sometimes that's some of the most compelling reading because you can you can you can just almost hear the person's rather than them trying to write a story. Right. They're telling a story, and that's one thing I didn't I didn't know I was a writer until yeah. I just started writing and just mm. taking the stories I would tell and just transcribing right. them. Right. And so, so there's the people can write, they just don't realize write. it. But yeah. I would say that a biographer mm. needs to be able to listen True. to your story mm -hmm. and your story and my story and our stories aren't gonna be the same mm -hmm. uh, because it never nobody has the exact same perspective. Mm -hmm and be able to take all the photos, all the videos, all the letters and military uh, records and research about what was going on in a certain place at a certain time mm -hmm. where that person was there. And they have to be able to weave all of these together of into course. a coherent mm -hmm. story. So that's why I think that the biographer uh, is a little bit unique. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, Keith Hayden is the volunteer who wrote uh, our first book for us. Um, he had written and published two prior books. One was a work of fiction and one a nonfiction book. Um, and this was something that he was passionate about. So he volunteered his, his time for us with that. And in fact, if you go to our website, uh, you'll see a picture of him, a little short bio. But um, you know, that's the kind of, of thing that, that not everybody's going to have that kind of time or yeah. Oh, it's very time consuming. It. Yeah. But. Um, so I'm hoping and praying that I get several uh, writers that, that say, hey, I'd like to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, I can. You know, one of the things that we're, we are planning is that as we get sales of the book, that we're going to pay a royalty to, to Keith to compensate him for the you know, ha almost a half year of his life that he put into this. Um, and we'd be willing to do that for any other uh, writer who, who comes to us. But at this moment, we can't pay anything up front. We just, of course, or, you know, maybe, 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 God willing. Yeah, God you just never know. You, you, you just God never will, know. You, you know, can, just never know what he'll put in your path <laughs> exactly. to do. Exactly. So if we, and, if we get a, a major endowment from uh, from some place, then, you know, mm -hmm. we, would, we certainly, I believe in paying for uh, the talent that, that mm -hmm. uh, makes this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I've been blessed that uh, I've been able to support myself on my military uh, pension and Social Security and uh, small VA disability. And so I don't have to come to the, the nonprofit to support myself. Sure. Uh, we have no paid staff currently, um, and, but we have this huge vision. And mm -hmm. we would love anybody who has... Um, has been inspired by what we're talking about um, to have a conversation with us about what they can, how they can participate, whether that's as a volunteer, whether it's a you know, donor, whether it's a introduction to somebody. Um, you know, we have needs just about everywhere. Um, you know, I need. We were talking before the show about being pulled in different directions. I desperately need 
somebody at, like a virtual assistant to say, Dennis, this is your schedule for today. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I mean, yeah, that would be nice. Siri, can you help us out here? You know, but uh, I'm waiting for my Siri on my phone right. to go, what? <laughs> Just, okay, we're going to pause for a second and do another ad. I saw Miss Lee Marie come on into the studio. She is going to be on deck here at 8 o'clock with The Go Show. And if you've never checked out The Go Show, it's all about the things. It, it, it is intentionally a community calendar. So she can just talk to you about all the events going on in Robertson County. And what cracks me up is she's fairly new to the, the county, and she knows more about it than I do. And I've been here since 92. And uh, she just she just runs circles around all of us who have been here for a while. But she really pays attention to what's happening in the community, and she's going to share that with you. And um, they always do a devotional. It's just a wonderful, wonderful show. Hope you'll stick around for the Go Show coming up right after this one. And I hope you'll go out and check out Corbin Creek Greenhouse Gifts and Gardening Center. Go to their Facebook page and keep up with them on social media. Uh, stay up to date on when they're going to go from winter hours to spring hours. Uh, they're on the winter hours still, according to uh, social media, 10 to 4 on Monday through Saturday and 1 to 4 on Sunday. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, they've got some events coming up. They've got just beautiful things. I mean, they're really getting going with, with, with their, their bedding plants, all of those things. As you get ready for your garden, get going. Uh, Brian Pulley, he'll be on here tomorrow with United Way. He says they did all of their bedding plants from uh, Corbin last year. Best garden you ever had. And uh, they've got two events they want you to save the dates for. First is April 1st. That's the In Full Bloom Festival at Corbin Creek Greenhouse. Starts at 9 a.m. The In Full Bloom Festival at Corbin Creek. And again, that's on April 1st, 9 a.m. And then they've got their Customer Appreciation Day that is coming up May 13th at 9 a.m. And they're going to have, you know, all kinds of freebies there that day, but uh, planning stations for the kiddos, uh, Mother's Day stuff going on. But those are two days. They say save the dates. And uh, look for me to be out there here just real soon because I've, I've got to get my CBD stuff replenished. That's something that helps me with my arthritis. My doctor told me to take it. That's all there is to it. And I don't like taking pharmaceuticals. I have really bad arthritis. And it takes care of that overall arthritic pain for me. And it may be a game changer for you as you deal with arth anything that's inflammation driven. Uh, they have the, as we start getting into bug season and you get the bug bites, they've got a salve for that. They've got a pain salve. They've also got um, a headache salve. And those, Miss Jane and Miss Amy, they make right there in their house. It's so cool. This stuff is all processed from plants that uh, Amy's brother Bill grows. So if you want Robertson County CBD and if you're curious about that, go and talk to them and they can school you on all the science behind it but it's at 4920 highway 161 here in springfield their phone number is 615-384-3185 615-384-3185 always let them know that you turn into and uh, you know they're cleaning up from the storms too they had the wind took the plastic off the green houses and so uh, just praying that they get everything back to normal hope all you guys are back to normal I was talking to some friends last night about how long the power was out my, my, I have a friend in Ridge Top I think mean, i I haven't talked to her today, but wow, is y'all have power? Everything good for y'all? Well, yeah, I was blessed uh, now, live in White House, and uh, we were without power for, what, six hours? Mm. And, you know, I know people that uh, were without power, for, like, through the weekend. Oh, yeah, and of we course, didn't. unfortunately, we've had several people uh, in the, the area who were killed during the mm -hmm. uh, during that storm. So... In, that young girl up in uh, um, Hendersonville, just heart wrenching. Um, yes. If you and just such a tragedy, um, just an accident, yep. just a tragic accident, and um, just that's just heartbreaking. And um, uh, just pray yeah. for their family for sure. We heard. Uh, I, I I go to to uh, cigar lounge in White House that was started. As I bet a, you know Todd Hibbs. I do know Todd. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And he talks about that. <laughs> He's my brother. He's my brother. Oh, my he and gosh. I work together. He yes. he and I have offices in this. He's their media director at okay. Madison. Okay. Where I was full yeah, time yeah, before yeah, I came yeah. here, and so yeah. yeah, he's my he's my dear brother. I so miss then him. You, then you know about Rick Cigar Lounge and yes, how it started as a, mm -hmm. a Christian outreach to men. Yes, uh huh. So it's wonderful. We, I love the concept. We were at uh, our men's group meeting last night, and uh, they had. Uh, they brought up Robbie Gallaty's message from Sunday, and he was talking about this young woman and about her, you know, just her testimony mm. and uh, some writing that she had uh, written in a journal and about her faith and the mm -hmm. like. And, you know, that um, his hope and his prayer is that this 
loss, uh, this horrible loss, uh, will actually help to uh, create an awareness in, in young uh, folks that, hey, we are, our time here on Earth is not going to be forever. Mm-hmm. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Um, you know, who am I? Who, who is God? Uh, and wrestle with those kind of questions so that there can be uh, a real spiritual awakening yeah. uh, that can come from this. So, you know, and I personally know that God can um, take the worst of our situations and turn things around uh, and and make things uh, not not necessarily better, but a blessing to others mm-hmm. in in some some way or fashion. And I've seen him do it in ways from my life that totally unexpected. So well, I'm praying and, that for this family. That that scripture that people say <clears throat> all things work for good for those who love the Lord, but not all things are good. Right. But he can use all things. If you want just a, a an overwhelming example of that, look at the life of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, if you don't know who that is, look it up. Uh, who who died during the uh, in a concentration camp? Oh my goodness. Has God used that horrifying, horrifying reality for him to be a profound statement of faith? And so, uh, yeah, all yeah. things work for good for those who love the Lord, but not all things are good. Right, but exactly. He'll use them all if yeah. He'll let Him. And um, uh, but anyway, yeah. And I had I I had not known much about her, but I want to know more. Right. I want to know more about her story because she was a, a amazing young woman, and uh, that's the thing. I, I tease my students all the time, and uh, uh, I'm 60, you know, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm old, y'all, mm-hmm. you're 15, mm-hmm. and I, I tease them, I'm like, uh, when you're, because I tell them to turn down their headsets, because I'm very hard of hearing, because I've listened to music too loud in radio for so many years, <laughs> and I say, uh, turn it down, and you will, when you're 60, you'll be going, I can't hear, Miss Vivio told me to turn it down. <laughs> I said, I'll be dead and gone, but you'll remember it. But the, there's there's a thing that washes over me when I say that, and I look out at my students, and I know I'll probably outlive some of them. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's, that's a that's one of those things, and you just, because mm-hmm. the, young, the, the young among us, they just don't, mm-hmm. they're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Mm-hmm. Right. And they don't realize the, 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 I don't know, the, the fragility and the extraordinary gift of what they have in front of them. Right. And um, because they're so young and you just can't see it. Right. And I've always had a, I've, I've always, I'm one of these young people that from the very early age, I, I got it. And I think maybe it's because of Kenneth, mm-hmm. losing Kenneth like we did. Maybe right. that was the reason why I knew you know, I can remember as a as a young person, just you know, I just want I just want to grow, Lord. I just want to have a life. I want mm-hmm. to have a family, and that was a great prayer for me when I was a young person. But most people, they ah, they don't even see past that. It. No, yeah. it's like ah, oh, we're just living full. But it's it's it, it, it's it's as I don't know what I'm trying to say. But and I don't mean to you know be heavy on that. But but that's the reality of it. It is. I've not talked to a teacher yet that hasn't had one that's been in it for you know maybe mm-hmm. more than 10 years that hasn't had a young person that they've known and felt so close to that is gone right and oh my gosh you know that's a that's something that man yeah if, uh, if her yeah. story can be that that's, to them and saying you know what, take serious what what's going on for and praying yeah, for and yeah. believing in and so but it's it's like this it it's a similar thread that weaves throughout and and uh, is part of what I'm why I'm doing what I'm doing mm-hmm. uh, and that is that we need to it's better for us to live in our daily existence knowing that this could be uh, our last day on earth mm-hmm. because then I can be more intentional about yeah. it mm-hmm. I can be more aware of the blessings that God has placed in my life mm-hmm. I can be more aware of the people around me who matter to me and I can be more willing uh, to come up and say hey I appreciate you I love you I'm glad that, that you're in my life you know what can I do for you mm-hmm. um, and you know I'm I'm 60 almost 67 uh, and I've been around for a long time and 
I've have a grandfather that lived to be a hundred, and my father is still alive at eighty nine, and wow. his brother is alive at ninety eight. So longevity. Uh, <laughs> so I have hopes that I have a long, yeah. but I don't. Yeah. I don't count on that. Right. And I don't. I, I try every day to, and that's what I'm hoping that people will do and look at this as a as a positive thing to say. Every day is a blessing, mm-hmm. and I want to live my life with joy in this in this moment um so that's what i I, i'm praying and hoping that will come out of this this tragedy this awareness that we can say hey yes this was a horrible thing for her but um there is still blessings around you and you and you and you are still alive with us Mm -hmm. right (laughs) yeah exactly what a beautiful what a what a beautiful calling that you have uh, on your life that's just amazing thank you so much yeah uh, for sure for sure i'm going to pause i'm going to take my last break here uh but we're talking with uh retired lieutenant colonel dennis schroeder and donovan hilton and uh, just having a wonderful uh, conversation and want you to know about the price of freedom i uh, cannot say enough about that and we're entering into a season i think we're going to be focusing more on that because we go into memorial day and then we have the fourth of july and then we have veterans day and so we seem to have that 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 season that we really focus on our veterans but it's a constant thing that we need to be mindful of those who are i've got my sweet friends the driscoll's um hannah is graduating from boot camp this week and that family if you don't know matt and christy driscoll christy still serves and is at the she works in nashville and she's in the air force and uh, Matt is retired, and now Hannah is uh, in the Air Force, wow, cool. and so in the Guard, I guess. But uh, just I, I just can't say enough about those who are serving. Uh, you know, I, I just uh, just appreciate them so much. So just keep all of them in your prayers constantly, and uh, for protection and for guidance, and just be thankful that there's people that are willing to step up and take care of you. And uh, with that said, let's go ahead and talk about one of our sponsors here. We're going to talk about Cumberland Connect, and uh, if you have. My power was out from Friday to Sunday, and uh, I guess on uh, we didn't turn our generator on. We we kept thinking it would come back on Friday night. Well, when we got up Sunday morning and realized it was still I'm not Saturday, Saturday morning and realized it was still out. Well, we have we have a generator, so we fired up the generator, plugged in all the you know refrigeration and kept all the food safe and all of those things. We're very fortunate to have that. And um, so we were, we were just kind of getting comfortable camping out. We had gas top on the stove so we could function without having to go to a hotel or anything. And But, you know, you're like, I wonder if that, I wish I had the Internet. And then I thought, hmm, I now have Cumberland Connect. And I just wonder if I plug it into my, my generator because there were, there were no lines down around my house. So theoretically, the power outages we had were beyond us. It was just something that was on the pathway to us. So I plugged in Cumberland Connect into my generator. I had internet, uh, even when the power was out. So, I, you know, we were roughing it, but not really. And uh, Cumberland Connect was a big part of that. And so I just say, oh, go check it out. I've got a gig. It's 80 bucks. That's it. It's so, and, and I was paying $65 to AT&T for speeds of like 3.5. It was terrible. I 600. It, it's amazing. My upload and download speeds, and they're the same. Uh, it, is, it is just incredible. You can get a gig for 80 bucks, y'all. And if you're somebody, oh, I can't even afford any kind of internet. Well, there is a uh, affordable connectivity program now that providers will, that provides qualifying households with monthly credit to help pay for internet services. And if eligible, you could receive up to thirty dollars per month for broadband services, and that can get you basic, which is so much better than what I had for sixty five from AT and T. Just saying, uh, if you're a Cumberland Electric customer, you're going to be eligible for Cumberland Connect. So any Cumberland Electric customer, you can access this. Now they may not be in your neighborhood yet, but they may be there. So go and check. It out at one eight hundred. You can call them one eight hundred nine eight seven two three six two. 1-800-987-2362 or you can go to cumberlandconnect.org cumberlandconnect.org you can put in your address and find out exactly uh, when they're going to be knocking on your door and it's just a wonderful service I cannot say enough about it and even when my power was out I still had internet that was so cool uh, go and talk to them today and be sure and thank them for sponsoring our little thing we call it let them know you turn to the we are talking with retired Lieutenant Colonel Jim Schroeder and Donovan Hilton, and we're talking about uh, this program, uh, The Price of Freedom. And is it thepriceoffreedom.org? It's the Price of Freedom Foundation. The Price of Freedom Foundation.org? Dot org, yeah. Dot org. Okay. Well, so, actually, actually the, website, <clears throat> the website is just priceoffreedomfoundation.org. You know, when I went to 
register it. It's like mm -hmm. the price of freedom. I've got you. I was, wasn't available. Mm -hmm. Just so price of freedom foundation dot org. Gotcha. Um, is our website. Okay. Uh, they can, uh, if somebody wants to contact us, they can uh, email at info at price of freedom foundation dot org. Uh, we have a presence on um, Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube and LinkedIn, and they would search for the Price of Freedom Foundation at each of those. Okay, and um, and I mean that's easy to remember because we all understand the Price of Freedom mm -hmm. yes. is great. Mm -hmm. It is great, and uh, I just I just love that you're doing this. And uh, anytime you want to come on and talk, just well, come on. I would pre I appreciate that, and yeah, so yeah, we'll anytime. talk about that a little bit later to for kind sure. of get a schedule going. So yeah, maybe Don can, can help uh, just introduce the Lieutenant Colonel to someone. One of the bigger things, and if you can, if you do have time, you have a skill set, please make sure you email Lieutenant Colonel, uh, and uh, congratulations in advance for the continued continue success of the organization. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, like I said, we uh, was talking to you, I think, before the, the program that uh, our first book has gone to the publisher. They did the interior uh, design. They sent it back to me. I found about 10 minor, minor things. So I sent that back. They mm -hmm. sent me a revision. So I have to go through that revision. But assuming that everything is good, we're going to go to print like the end of this week. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yes. When, it's, when it's available, we want to get you back on and let's talk oh, about that. Great. And an introduction, If do you know Nancy Arnold? I do not. Okay. She used to work for Lifeway. Okay. And Nancy's, I just saw Nancy just like the video, so she's probably listening. Nancy would love to, mint, I mean, and I think I understand this. Nancy was on with uh, Danny Ashley, they put out a book on uh, Coach Boyce Smith, okay. okay? She's expert at this, okay. at doing books. Super. And she, is, she says, I would love to teach somebody this mm -hmm. and what she knows, but she worked for Lifeway, I'm wanting to say 20 plus years. Wow. But um, she's, on, she's on watching right now, so Nancy, you guys need to make a connection. Tell them again how to connect with you. Okay, well, um, we have, uh, the email address mm -hmm. is Info at priceoffreedomfoundation.org. Mm -hmm. um, she can call me direct if she wants. Uh, Give her a number. Give it twice. That's how we do it on radio, two times. 615-389-1867. That's 615-389-1867. Um, you can call me there, text, okay. message me. Uh, you can email. And then, of course, uh, to take a look at the website and get a sense for what we're doing to reach it's www.priceoffreedomfoundation.org awesome thank you so very much thank you for being a part of the show god bless you look forward to seeing you again look forward to seeing you again Don. and thank you guys for being a part of the show hope you'll join us tomorrow for one street over this is 1100 wsgi